Hey. So I did a poll on my Instagram last week, which if you don't already follow me is at Jasmine Zaid. I post a lot of fun interactive stories, especially about music, pop culture and stuff about my life. So check it out. But I posted a poll last week asking you guys to vote on my next YouTube video because I already had a bunch of ideas. I just didn't know what order to kind of post them in. So I just wanted to do a little interest check. And one of the videos that I posted about that I wanted to do is an exploration on the fall of the girl group boys world not only did a lot of people vote for me to do the video but a lot of people actually took the time out of their day to slide up on that story and tell me like with a message that they really really want me to cover boys world and several people said that to me so i knew it was going to be the first one that i did in my little list of to-do videos so thank you very much for reading my mind You may already know that I did do a video with like over 50,000 views at this point exploring the rise of the girl group boys world. But in today's video, we unfortunately are going to be discussing what contributed to them having to disband and no longer make music together. If you don't know, the group posted a signed statement announcing their disbandment on July 5th in 2024, just a couple of months ago. And yes, the disbandment was back in July and I'm just now doing the video because I wanted their breakup to have a little bit of time to breathe before I jump to cover it. I wanted to give the public a little bit of time to roll in their opinions about what happened before I talked about my own just to kind of gauge what was going on and to also give the girls a chance to breathe and do their own thing so we could kind of talk about what they're up to in this video as well. So I feel like now is a good time to go ahead and do it. So we're going to talk a little bit about Boys World in general and what they did in their time together and then a little bit on why I believe that they couldn't last and why they ultimately ended the group. And then at the end, we will do some catching up with the members of the group and kind of see where we're going from here and what's in store in the future for these girls. But first, of course, let's start with a little bit about who Boys World are and what they accomplished together. So if you don't know, Boys World was a five-piece girl group comprised of the members Olivia, Elana, Queenie, Lillian, and Makaili. They were scouted individually on their social medias by a company called KYN Entertainment, which if you don't know, the man behind KYN Entertainment is Sonny Takur, who used to be the president of Psycho Music and helped develop up and manage groups like One Direction, Fifth Harmony, and Little Mix. So after the girls were scattered on social media, they were all sent to LA actually to move into a house together where they could get to know each other and kind of train and develop before they would debut their very first single. They were together in this house for a good nine months before they released anything to the public. Then in January of 2020, they began posting stuff about the group, doing a bunch of TikToks and little YouTube videos and things together to kind of introduce themselves to the public and and let people get a feel for how they behave together as a group, which a lot of people have noted at this point that this is a very popular tactic used in the K-pop sphere, like having people come together and train and develop for a long time before they debut, so to speak, to the public. So that was really interesting to see that formula kind of brought over into a Western or USA-based girl group. They released their debut single called Girlfriends in October of 2020, along with a music video that featured full-on choreography and everything. Girlfriends is described as a powerful anthem of female empowerment that describes choosing strong female friendships over a boy okay like okay i love girlfriends i in my video that i uploaded on the rise of boys world i literally reacted to the music video and i was just gagged the whole time i love girlfriends i think they picked a really good debut single for the vision that they had for themselves in the beginning it's very dance poppy and very catchy and very fun the vocal harmonies were beautiful and it was just a great choice like i said for their debut single so a few months after working on girlfriends promo their second single came around it's called wingman and it was released in january of 2021 this is another like fun powerful poppy female empowerment anthem it was described as an uplifting blast of energy by paper magazine who they were featured with at the time in the beginning shortly after this they released a single called tiptoe which was a little different in sound for boys world i will say just because it's slightly different from the vibe of girlfriends and wingman it was a little bit more r&b ish it had more of like a trappy flow to it and it showed off their vocals and harmonies in a little bit of a different way than their first two singles. The following month, these three singles that they released would be a part of a bigger project, an EP called While You Are Out. It has a really cute cover. I love this EP cover. I said this in my other Boys World video and I still stand by it. I think this cover fits their vibe a lot for the time. And by that, I just mean at this time, a lot of people were referencing them as like a Gen Z girl group or like a Gen Z Spice Girls more specifically. And I think this cover just absolutely screams that. Like the way their style 
here. Olivia's pink hair, the wide open smiles like that, looking like a bunch of besties. Like, yeah, it just really fits the vibe of a Gen Z Spice Girls, especially the way that they're dressed. It just screams like young Gen Z girls. So yeah, this EP included their existing singles, Girlfriends, Wingman, and Tiptoe, but also featured two new songs called Relapse and Touched by an Angel. Relapse in particular was more of a slow ballady type of song. So that was nice to hear from them instead of the usual upbeat, super poppy stuff they were doing. And Touch by an Angel is just simply a banger. Very, very underrated Boys World song, but I love Touch by an Angel. Um, it's super fast paced, just upbeat and fun. And I absolutely loved it. Overall, a pretty solid EP. I don't have a lot of issues with the While You Were Out EP. After this EP release, the girls released what I think of as two kind of rogue singles. And by rogue, I just mean they were never a part of a bigger picture. They were kind of just singles that were there. And they both have music videos, one of them called All Me, and then the other one called Something in the Water. All right, I need to move my camera a little bit. That angle was just not working for me. But anyway, Something in the Water in particular, I have to shout out because I maintain to this day that Something in the Water was one of Boys World's best singles. It was such a fun, uplifting summer song, just so feel good and catchy. The music video is so cute. It's so good. I just love something in the water. And it also felt like a little bit of a turn for Boys World. Like something in the water was this last little glimpse that we got of this super like spunky Gen Z Spice Girls thing they were doing until they would go in a little bit of a break and then come back with a different kind of vibe. So I look at something in the water as like this amazing summer single like last hurrah for the early version of Boys World. So they did a little mini hiatus for a couple of months in between something in the water and then their next single that they released called so what i vividly remember when so what was announced and we saw the cover and the concept and everything for it and the internet kind of just went crazy for them like i remember this so vividly they were kind of getting their flowers a little bit on music twitter people looked at this cover and they were like wow they're styled so cohesively finally they look like a group because a lot of people had a really big issue with their style not being super cohesive before this so the music twitter like approved of the so what look and people were eating it up i do think it was a really really good cover but yeah, and then the song actually came out and it was a little bit different for them. So what was a little bit more hip hop -y, a little bit more trappy in a way that was kind of different than Tiptoe. But it had a little bit of a rap verse going on in there. The music video was so much fun. Very, very cute. And they all looked amazing. So it just felt like a new direction for them. I will also say during the Something in the Water era, they started uploading like, um, like dance rehearsals. Correction, they actually did a dance rehearsal video for All Me first, but my point here still stands, which is another thing that's really prevalent in K-pop that seems to really work. People love to watch a dance rehearsal when you have choreography for your song, just like being in the studio and wearing something kind of cute, like not exactly a music video, but you're wearing like cute dance rehearsal clothes and then doing the choreo to your song. They started doing that during Something in the Water and then continued it during So What and did it again. And I think that was just such a good touch and a great great idea but yeah the next single the girls released was called mantrum sort of still following with this pop meets hip-hop rap thing that they had going on at this time like i think the vibe of so what really does fit the vibe of mantrum as well they're very cohesive together mantrum is another song that's a little bit more mature than where we started i remember when i heard mantrum for the first time and queenie has the line um don't make me talk about the times i never finished we talk in minutes girl wait a minute <laughs> And I was like, oh, because they had never like dropped anything like that lyrically. So I was like, okay, I see what they're doing. That was fun. I also wanted to note that Mantrum is one of maybe, maybe my favorite, but definitely one of my favorite Boys World music videos. They had such a solid concept going on for Mantrum. The music video like matched the concept of the song wonderfully because the song is called Mantrum, you know, man tantrums and having to like be a boy's mama when you're like raising a boy when you're dating him. And then in the music video, they had this guy that was being super cranky and babying his car and being a diva, throwing a Mantrum. And then the girls were the ones who worked in the body shop as like mechanics and they were styled so cutely. The dance was great. It was just very cohesive and I loved it. Around this time when Mantrum was going on, the girls got to do a little live show, which I thought was really cool. And then they did like a little mini road trip kind of thing where they did a couple of shows. Very, very small performances, but still nice to see them out there performing. At one of these sets that they did, they teased their next single called Me, My Girls and I. This was released on June 2nd and then was later a part of their second EP 
EP with the same name, Me, My Girls, and I. This EP contained the already existing singles, So What, Mantrum, and Me, My Girls, and I, and then added two new songs called Wrong Side and Funeral. And the girls would perform these songs on a mini little East Coast summer tour that they did. Again, very, very small shows, but still good to see them getting out there and getting to be on stage. After the Me, My Girls, and I EP, the girls went back to kind of releasing what I call rogue single. Like, don't know where they were really going, but singles. The first of which was called Pina Colada, which I love because it was slightly different for them once again, but still very much in their caliber. Um, it's a very beachy, islandy song with a great music video and the dance for this eats so bad. I still think to this day that the Pina Colada dance rehearsal video is the best one that they ever did. I was blown away when I saw that video. There's also a verse in Pina Colada that's in Spanish, which is super cool and was a little bit different for them. But overall, just a very slick and smooth and fun, vibey, beachy song. Song. I really like Pina Colada. The next single that they released after Pina Colada was called Gone Girl. And oh my god, this is one of my favorite Boys World songs. Absolutely amazing. I love, love, love Gone Girl. It was just such a beautiful R&B song that showed off their harmony so well together. I think that exact sound that they were tapping into in this era was just mwah like 50 chef's kisses. Then around the holidays in 2023, the girls released a Christmas single called The Bitch Who Stole Christmas, which is objectively an amazing pop song. I love Christmas pop songs because you're allowed to be really cheesy in them because it's the holidays, it's Christmas and it's pop. So it's like cheesy galore and it just works and it's so good. That's why I really enjoyed Sabrina Carpenter's Fruitcake EP. So The Bitch Who Stole Christmas was really good and I loved it. And I think it's just such a cool, unique concept that I can't believe a pop artist has done before like instead of the grinch who stole christmas the bitch who stole christmas after the christmas single the girls went on what i call another little mini like five six month hiatus and then they came back with a single called caught in your love caught in your love was stuck in my on repeat on spotify forever after it came out just so catchy and vibey just so feel good anthemy the harmonies the chorus oh my god I love Cotton Your Love. I feel like I've said I loved every single song that came out. Can you tell? I was a really big Boys World fan. Like, I was really writing for them. I loved their music. It's just... Uh. I also love the music video and the look that they had going on for Cotton Your Love. Like, the vibrant red against that super crisp blue was just very vibrant and cute. And they looked very cohesive. I just loved it. So to me, it just felt like their music was getting better and better with each release. And they were tapping into something that was very very much them and their sound and they were really finding their footing so imagine my shock when after caught in your love they announced that boys world was over on social media especially because this also followed their appearance on a chinese survival show called show it all like they literally traveled to china and got to be a part of a chinese survival show got to perform be on the big stage be on camera and hd everything and they were starting to like drum up a little bit of hype in asia and then disbanded so then the big question is if i feel like they were tapping into something amazing but then they disbanded what happened i want to start this section off by saying that i don't think this was a music issue and i feel like a lot of people agree with me because i did a lot of research on public opinion and nobody was really saying like oh they failed because their music sucks like nobody said that their music was great I just sat here and said, I love every single Boys World song that I've heard. Like, I love Boys World music. I love their songs, especially towards the end as we were getting into, like, Pina Colada and Gone Girl and Caught in Your Love. Like, they were just really tapping into something magical. So I... 100% do not think this was a music issue. We are going to discuss what the real issue was. I have a few things, but I'm gonna start with the bulk of it. Like the number one main thing that could probably answer this entire question for you is just them having a sucky team just them having a sucky team and I will explore with you all of the ways that their team sucked and why I should have been in charge of Boys World. The thing about their team is that they wanted to like jump into having Boys World be a big girl group and wanted to debut them like a k-pop girl group so bad. Like they scouted these girls, had them come live together and train and develop like a k-pop girl group and then expected them to explode on the scene debut and just be everywhere and that's just 
not realistic and it's not going to happen like that for you. So what their team ended up doing was overspending their debut budget and then leaving them with nothing afterwards. Like they went way too hard in the beginning. They had these girls doing magazine features and paying for them to have merch for fans that don't exist really yet. You know what I mean? And these nice HD like high concept shoots and covers and music videos, all this stuff in the very, very beginning with no weight, no gravity, like nothing to fall back on because you have to like develop them into having a loyal fan base first and they just did not especially considering that these girls that were in the girl group were kind of unknown at the time like when they got together and debuted and everything i will argue that olivia was kind of known she had like a little bit of youtube fame she posted a bunch of covers and original music and stuff like that and did a lot of interactive stuff on youtube and had some subscribers that really liked her stuff but nothing too crazy you know what i mean not enough to like bring over a big fan base of people like to support your girl group Queenie had small amounts of Instagram attention before debut and I know Ilana also did some appearances with American Girl and like very 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 minor small tiny acting roles in New York and then Lillian and Makaili were completely unknown to the internet before so with that it's like you don't have enough just not enough traction to like spend your whole budget on debuting these girls and making them huge right off the bat it was just too much too quickly and not only was it too much too quickly but one of the main issues that i have with their team is that they pretty much made the girls stuck with very lackluster tiktok promo for like their entire career instead of real promo this essentially made it so the girls were fending for themselves like we're not gonna do much to give you promo so we're just gonna abuse the fuck out of your tiktok and figure it out that's, I mean, that's what it felt like. So then it ended up making these girls feel like an internet TikTok girl group and literally nothing else. And this also, this TikTok promo, like oversaturated the hell out of their releases to the point where it was almost doing them more harm than good because they would get in this cycle of teasing a new single that they had and then over teasing the shit out of it like constant tiktoks about the same thing over and over again until it came to release day and people just no longer cared their team just relied so heavily on let's make tiktoks let's make tiktoks to sustain an entire career when that app cannot sustain your entire career it's an amazing tool for jump starting a career like you never know what could happen if your song goes viral it picks up whatever and that gets some eyes on you but still Staying on TikTok for the entirety of your career, it's just not sustainable. It's only a tool to jumpstart your career. You cannot just use TikTok as your entire promo campaign. And that's exactly what their team was doing for the entirety of their career. This team didn't even bother promoting the Me, My Girls, and IEP. It's actually like beyond me when I think about it. I'm like, you really did nothing. Like, I feel like some people might know about some of the songs that exist on me my girls and i because they were singles but wrong side and funeral girl are not seeing the light of day by anyone except for like the small boys world fandom that like clung on to them and liked them the other issue that i have with their team is that they didn't do much to get them booked for live shows like yes they got them booked for a couple of live shows but like not even in the right way like they kind of had a little bit of music out and then did like this mini east coast summer tour or whatever did like little performances but that's not the kind of stuff that you want to start doing until you've gained more traction and you have a little bit more loyalty and support from a fan base that can actually make it out to see you and make you money and fill up those crowd spots their team should have been having them open for artists that are kind of similar to them so that people in the audience who like this artist would see the opener and be like huh i also like them too this girl group that's cool i mean if you get the opportunity to study music business like i did or you have any in tune at all into marketing and promo tactics for developing groups and artists and bands like you know that having them start small with performances is always going to be the best move like getting them in as an opening act or even doing like little parties in the area little festivals in the area just like they lived in LA just any little event around LA where they could show face a little bit and gain some support and have people listen to their music instead of just throwing them headfirst into their own little mini tours when they just were not in that realm yet but working hard to get your artists booked for not even just shows but live appearances in general is so beneficial and so important and they just didn't do that for them in the right way anyway and then the other thing about their group is that they were having these girls release singles so randomly so inconsistently with no type of organization it was very confusing and very chaotic all of the time it really never felt like there was a real 
reason for these things to be happening. It was kind of just like tease a single over and over and over again on TikTok. And then there was no longevity to the single. They didn't let it breathe. And then just release another single, abuse the fuck out of it on TikTok, then go away for five months and then release two more singles like within a month of each other. It was very, very strange. Just like throwing shit out the wall and see what would stick instead of having some organization that would like really help them. Especially on the note that they weren't letting their singles breathe either. Like you should be releasing a single and giving it its moment to shine for a while, promoting it, letting people soak it up, have fun with it, do different things with it fun ways to promo it the dance rehearsal videos were great but they didn't let them breathe very again throwing things at the wall and hoping something would stick hoping something would blow up like and it just never did because it was so disorganized and it just could have been done and handled so so much better and this is not the fault of the girls of boys world like this is entirely kyn and their management i think they weren't even under a management company and they were just being managed by a person so i'm not it's not the fault of the girls i'm sure they did the best they could with what they were given and they just were not given very much and i do think from the looks of their disbandment video that this was just something that kind of ran its course and it was time to let it go and not like we're tired of doing this we're gonna disband because we don't want this anymore i really don't think it was something that they really really wanted i think it was the label giving up on them and being like we're not willing to invest in a group anymore you know? And that's exactly why big girl groups and boy bands continue to be endangered over here in the West, especially in the USA, because labels just do not know what the hell to do with groups. But if you are looking for a girl group to stand in the US, I manage a girl group called PMX. They're a queer three member pop girl group that make amazing, amazing bangers. They love each other. They're best friends. Their concepts are absolutely insane and they blow me out of the water every day. So if you want to support us in PMX, I'm going to have a link in the description where you can check out all their music and all their social medias. They just released a single called Meet Me Down. It's an Afro pop song that's really, really, really good. Perfect end of summer vibes into the fall. Like, I love Meet Me Down and I love PMX, so I just thought I would mention it. But yeah, the biggest issue contributing to the downfall of Boys World is just their team. And it's so unfortunate because those girls are extremely talented. They seem to be very close best friends. I mean, they still hang out with each other. They sounded amazing together. They just had so, so much potential and were essentially just let down. But there are some other little nitpicky reasons why I think that Boys World couldn't last. One of them being their name. This was something I was very surprised. Not actually. Now that I think about it, no, I'm not that surprised that I came across so many people in the public being like, I don't like their name. It was their name from the jump that I couldn't get on board with. It was a horrible name. Lots of people have said that exact thing. Like, I didn't know so many people were so against it but it is a big thing that i've seen across the internet people do not like a girl group called boys world a lot of people were saying they thought they were a k-pop boy band a lot of people were saying they thought they were like giving 90s boy band with the name boys world but at the same time a lot of people also noted that they also don't like the name girls world either so either way it's kind of just like a no even though boys world tried to say that the boys in their name stood for best of yourself i get why they said that and that's great but for me i do agree that i do not like the name boys world and and best of yourself is a really nice sentiment but it just doesn't it just doesn't make sense it doesn't work for a, a group name so i see why that kind of could contribute to people you know not knowing exactly who they are or not wanting to tune in or being confused because they just didn't really like the name but other than their team and the name i think one of the biggest issues contributing to the downfall of boys world as well is the lack of like visual direction for them cohesive group image kind of thing they started off with this very colorful spunky gen z spice girl girls thing that I think could have worked so well if they tapped into that further but then like I said after something in the water they kind of dropped it completely and switched into this new direction which is fine I get wanting to do a more mature concept and to look a little bit different and not stick with the spunky gen z spice girls thing but after that they just no longer really had a cohesive group image and style and brand that made boys world boys world like who are we you know i feel like the stuff that they were doing was just too experimental and random always experimenting always random different from the last thing it wasn't one of those situations where it's like 
we are a group with a cohesive brand and image, but we are doing different things that still fall under that umbrella. It was like, we're doing different things and we don't know who we are. We're just doing different things, you know? I think they had a much better chance at doing a little bit better if they kind of presented themselves as one solid thing a little bit better. Still experimental, that's fine. Experimental is great, just not random. You know what I mean? Overall, just a very, very, very unfortunate situation. They made such good music together. I'm going to miss Boys World so, so dearly, and I really do wish them the best. I feel like things could have been very different with a more competent team that was willing to invest in them a little bit more slowly and like taking things with time and really working to develop them like something that was worth it. And to me, the way their team treated them, it felt like they were just a cash grab for them. Like, let's debut this girl group and see if they can make it. Do this, do this, do this. And they didn't take a moment to actually slow down and care about them. Like, but that brings me to my question of where are they now? What are these members doing now? What's next for them? I know that Lillian and Alana actually live together still in LA, actually down the street from Queenie, who is also still living in LA. Queenie also is working a job now, but I'm not sure what the job is. I know she's posted openly about working a job and like her outfits at her job and stuff, but I don't know what she's doing. So let me know in the comments if you happen to know what Queenie is doing at work because I have no freaking idea. I just know that she lives in LA and she still posts like influencer -y content, eating and clothes and you know stuff like that. So Olivia is also still in LA and is regularly seen hanging out with Ilana, Lillian and Queenie. I know that Olivia is also still in music. She still posts a lot of covers and is still doing a lot of writing. And her and Lillian actually just wrote a song called Confessions for a girl group either called Lucemble or Lusemble. Not sure. You can eat me up in the comments for that. I'm sorry. But they actually did just do a song for that group. So that's really, really cool. They're both still actively working in music. And then Mikaeli has also recently been teasing her solo era already um, about to release solo music. That's very, very cool. So that seems to be her direction. I will say Olivia was always my favorite member of Boys World. And I think she has so much potential to have a really cool solo career. So I'm very excited to see if she ends up putting her own original music out. She has before, but I just mean like in a more serious way. Because she usually just posts them on YouTube but she has a very like soft indie sad pop girl kind of vibe that I think really works right now so hopefully she can tap into that and I really thought that Queenie would go for dancing Queenie is like to me the main dancer in boys world if they were given roles so I was really hoping to see her tap more into that and become more of a dancer but I have no idea I have no idea but yeah like I said rooting for all of them in whatever they continue to get up to anyway thank you guys so much for watching my exploration on the downfall of boys world please let me know in the comments what you thought of boys world why you think maybe they couldn't last or what they had the potential to do. Let me know your favorite Boys World songs, things they did together. I want to chat. I want to hear it all. While you're down there, don't forget to look in my description box. I have a form there where you can fill out video requests. If there's something specific you want to see from me, let me know. I'll check it out. And also, while you're down there, you can follow my social medias. I post on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, when I'm not here posting on YouTube. So, I hope you're all doing absolutely amazing, staying warm in this fall weather, drinking your water, and thriving. And I will see you in my next video. Mm -hmm.